Hi again, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Alumni Chats, a weekly podcast featuring alumni from the Department of Broadcasting and Journalism here at Western Illinois University. My name is Buzz Hoon, and I'm the host of the podcast. Today, I will be talking with 2007 graduate Joe Roderick. How are you doing, Joe? I'm good, Buzz. It's great to see you. Thanks for having me. One of my all-time favorite people to uh, to talk with. And part of that is is just to let everybody know, Joe, I think you have come to visit campus and return to talk to our students over a long period of time for on a consistent basis. And I've always appreciated all that. So um, th- that's I've- just right off the bat. I appreciate you guys asking me back uh, so often as well. It's something I don't think I ever imagined would have happened while I was a student there. So I I will always be appreciative of that. And anytime I can come back and have a a really O's or uh, (laughs) the the pizza up there too, I always always make a point to come back for that. (laughs) So Joe, tell everybody where you are now and what's going on in your life. I have, uh, so I'm working for a website now in St. Louis called ClabesOnline.com. It is run by a uh, man by the name of Mike Claiborne, who works for the Cardinals radio network. Um, So it's pretty much all sports related stuff that we do. And it was a uh, transition that I knew was coming. I knew I was going to be working for this website at, at some point in 2020, but it kind of was sped up as uh, as COVID hit and radio stations all over the country were making cuts uh, to their staff. And I, I unfortunately was one of those back from the sports talk radio station that I worked for in St. Louis. So I'm going on, I, I want to say this November is going to be 12 years that I have been working in sports radio or sports media in the, uh, in the St. Louis area. So let's, before we get into all the different uh, changes and and paths that you've taken along with your career. Let's go back to when you were a young lad. Um, Were you, did you grow up in the Chicago area? Is, do I remember that right, Joe? Yeah. Grew up in, uh, in Lansing, Calumet city, Illinois. So right there on the, uh, on the Illinois, Indiana border up there, just Southeast of Chicago. So when did you feel like you had an interest in the media, especially with sports? So I always have always been a sports fan, Uh, always a a huge baseball fan, grew up a huge White Sox fan, still follow them today as much as I I do with the Cardinals. But it's it's weird because I I, as much of a sports fan I was uh, whenever I would play video games as a as a kid, as young as I mean, 10, 11 years old, me and a, a my my friend that lived down the street, we would play video games and we would have a little tape recorder, a little cassette recorder, and we would hit record on it and we would play whether it be NBA Jam or Cal Ripken Baseball and we would do play-by-play in color and we would do the commentary for the games that we were playing right there on the TV. And that also went, I mean, I'm sure one of our parents have the uh, video tape of us. We'd made our own newscasts back in the day. Uh, and this, we're talking, I mean, you know, I moved down to the St. Louis area when I was 12. So we're talking 10, 11 years old when I was doing this. And not only that, being a huge fan of the White Sox, I would go to bed at night listening to White Sox games. I, I believe back in the day they were on WMAQ, which I think was 670 at the time, which is now the score. Mm-hmm. And it was John Rooney and it was Ed Farmer who were calling the games. So when I wasn't watching the games on TV, when I wasn't watching Ken Harrelson and Tom Pachorek do the games on TV, I was listening to John Rooney and Ed Farmer call the games on the radio. And I mean, most nights as a, as a kid, I was listening to broadcasts and I don't think it hit me at the time that that was something I wanted to do. It was just, I was such a big sports fan that I, I couldn't get enough of that. So I guess that kind of molded me into when, when it came time, you know, around the end of high school, okay, you know, figure out what you want to do with your life. It kind of was like, okay, maybe, maybe broadcasting is, is a direction I want to go. Now I know the story that uh, how you got here because you were interested in, in maybe playing some baseball because you had done that in high school. Right. And you were also interested in media, but I like to credit your mom. 
because she's <laughs> also a WIU graduate, right? She is. Yeah. So when we first started, I can't, I, I guess it would have had to be junior year. Maybe I, I can't remember exactly when it was that I made the decision to go to Western, but I knew I had to start looking at colleges. And I, I went to, uh, I'm from the Godfrey Alton area down in Illinois. So I was at Alton high. And w- when I started to look at schools, my mom's one thing was that she said, you know what? She goes, I don't care if you go there or not. She goes, but I went to Western. I want you to take a trip up there and I want you to go visit that. So God I did, I, I went up and I went up there and you guys back. And so, I mean, this would have been, I mean, 2001, 2002, and you, know, you guys gave a great tour of all the facilities, all the broadcasting facilities, uh, the radio station, the TV setup you had. And I remember as we went around, you emphasized that, everybody was going to be hands-on from day one that, you know, when you walked in there as a freshman, you were going to have an opportunity to get involved with everything that was going on with the broadcasting department. And that wasn't something that you could get at a, at a much larger university in Mizzou, for example, you weren't getting in there and, you know, being able to do a radio show or have a chance to be on their TV station as a freshman. So that, that very much, in, much interested me. And then on top of that too, I knew I wanted to play baseball and I had an opportunity to go there and meet with the coach. It was Stan Hyman at the, oh, yeah. uh, at the time and met with him, talked with him, kind of went over everything. And he kind of said, Hey, you know what? You show up, you walk on, I, you're going to have a good shot at making the team. And, and I, I did my freshman year. So that, uh, you know, that helped you know, talk me into it. I wasn't promised anything by, by any means, but knowing that from day one on, on the campus there at Macomb, that I was going to have a chance to do those two things uh, made, made my decision pretty easy. Now, if I remember correctly, you blew out your knee. No, no, no that, was it? that, 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 those, the two blown out knees happened well after my okay, plane. I'm trying, yeah. I'm no, I'm remember. very broken. No, okay. I'm very, yeah, very, there, there's a whole lot wrong with me, Buzz. Okay. Uh, well, <laughs> but you, you eventually I tore I, my I, rotator cuff. So I tore, okay. I, I was, I was, I redshirted as a freshman and I tore my rotator cuff that okay. summer. Um, I was a catcher. And I thought it would be a good idea to pretend to be a pitcher at practices. And <laughs> as I was trying to throw curveballs, I, I I messed something up real good. And yeah, that was that was the end of that. So to our fortunate, you took my class. I remember uh, as, as a young person in in the, the pro- program, and you got started at WAXS, the old radio station, to get you involved. And I think you and DJ may have gotten bitten by the radio bug early on. Yeah, so, uh, DJ Nozar, Dave Nozar, whatever whatever the heck he's going by these days. <laughs> um, he, so uh, he and I met freshman year. He was uh, from, I want to say, I think it was from Homewood Flossmoor. And they had a radio program there at the high school. So he yeah. had, he was much more advanced than I was. Uh, by the time that we got there and he lived in the same, we lived on the same floor. We both lived on uh, floor six over at Henninger and we became friends because we realized we had classes together in the broadcasting department and had, you know, he, he was, he was definitely the idea man. He had so many ideas and things that he wanted to do with. So I had to be the organized one between the, uh, between the two of us. <laughs> and we, uh, I mean, we were a, a perfect fit for each other back in the day with everything that we had planned. And we, I think it was, I want to say it was Tuesday mornings. We had this idea of going in there early in the morning and doing a, I can't remember if it was a 30 minute or if it was a one hour radio show that we did on a TV station but we, we did that. And uh, to this day, I think the only people that might've listened to that was my sophomore roommate at the time, because I turned on the TV to channel three before I left to go to, <laughs> to the, to the, uh, to uh, the, the station at the time. And he had to wake up and, and turn the TV off once he heard my voice start. Nice. That that's a, that's a great story. So <laughs> You got involved with WIUS, which is uh, known as the dog there on campus. And you and DJ just expanded what you had started in my class. You, you decided to go full on. Tell us a little bit about that. 
I, so, I mean, at the time, I think the way we started, it was he, DJ had this idea to just do it. He was doing Friday mornings, I think at the time. And I can't remember the guy's name that he was doing the show with, but it was an older student that was coming back and wanting to get into the radio business that he and DJ started doing that. And then DJ was, you know, telling me, he's like, you need, you need to start coming into this too, because I had started doing more of the sports stuff with you guys. I had started doing more of the sports TV stuff. That's right. And DJ pulled me back into the radio side of things. And at some point before my, before my senior year, I, I think I was going to end up, if I had taken 15 hours both semesters, I still would have ended up six hours short um, of, of graduating in four years. And I knew I wanted to graduate in four years. I didn't want to have to come back for another semester. I didn't want to have to do that. So we started thinking, okay, what can we do to earn more hours? And one of the ideas we had was, well, if we do a three-hour radio show each and every day, surely they're going to give us some sort of credit <laughs> hours for this. And as we sat down and we started adding everything up and doing everything, and then meeting with our, uh, we met with Pat Stout and kind of talked it out with him, we realized the work we were doing was worth about three or four classes Yeah, worth for, for you're talking three hours a day, plus all the prep work that went into it, because we weren't just sitting behind a microphone which I, I think, you know, as a college student, you think it's, that's as easy as a radio show is. You just sit down and you do that and you realize really fast that it's not. And we, I mean, we were booking guests, we were coming up with bits and we were doing that. So we kind of wrote everything out and we almost, I mean, we pretty much made it our own curriculum, like that we, to do this radio show each and every day, our entire senior year. And then from there, like once we started, it kept growing and growing and growing. And we kept adding more people onto it and more bits onto it and more things onto it that we could do that it, it, it kind of just took on a whole life of its own. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and I remember you gave promotional mugs away to help promote the show. <laughs> we, I, mean, the, I mean, not only that, we went and we did, <laughs> DJ and I spent a day, more than a day, I guess, we, we did a, a photo shoot between the two of us at the, at the dorms of the house or wherever. I can't even remember. Cause I know DJ and I lived in the same house with each other junior year. And then we decided senior year, that wasn't a good idea that we were spending too much time together and we had to get away from that, but we did a photo shoot. And then, I mean, you're talking what, back in 2005, 2006. So we used paint uh, or whatever to make up posters and then we went around to all of the buildings on campus, all of the dorms on campus, and would just tape up these pictures of the two of us with Dirt and DJ, you know, whatever it was at seven to nine, I think we did it every morning or, or so, or six to nine, whatever, however long we were on the air for every day. And I mean, we made promotional posters and we put them up all over campus hoping to get people to listen to us. <laughs> and then, I mean, we were trying to come up with just all kinds of things that we could give away, that we could get for free, that we could do to get anybody to tune in and listen to this and then have to put out something good enough to get college students to listen to <laughs> each and uh, each and every day. So uh, the time and effort that we put forth towards this is... I mean, it, it might be more promotional work than I've done in 10 years of radio here <laughs> <laughs> because now it's just easy. You send out a tweet to promote something. Yep. I mean, back then it, it took a whole day to do this. It did. And, and so just that work alone should have granted you access to the broadcasting school of infamy or whatever you want to talk about. Then no, Joe Roderick decides he's also going to be a sports announcer. And I remember as I tell people, um, Joe was one of our first sideline reporters for our TV crews. And Joe was not just somebody that was going to be seen uh, occasionally during the, the program, during our broadcast, to give an update on what the coach had to say over on the sidelines. He was in the stands. He was talking to people. He's tracking people down. I was bored by just sitting there in the, in, 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 you know, trying to go into the huddle and come out with something. I, I wanted it to be more. I wanted to add onto this. And I know now you guys are doing like full on ESPN pregame shows. Yeah. I've seen, I've seen the stuff you guys are doing now. You guys have sets uh, yeah. there on the field. And I mean, 
the the things I could have done with that. I mean, my my goodness, I, I would have been putting out Tom Rinaldi pieces before <laughs> <laughs> before games <laughs> if I had the stuff that you guys have now. But I thought, you know, we, we need to add into this. We, you know, and being there in being around uh, Western Hall as much as I was my freshman year for stuff, you you get an idea of everything that goes on in that building. You kind of learn who some of the people are. You and the athletic director, I knew who he was at the time. And you kind of just go in and you you think of, okay, what ridiculous things can I do or what kind of informative things I, I could do? Because I, I remember going into the crowd and sitting next to uh, Dr. Van Alstine and doing an interview with him in the middle of the game. And it's also not easy. It wasn't easy back then either because the earpiece and, and whatever I had, you're really kind of hoping that you have a good cameraman or you have a good, you know, people to work with that you're not going off of, you know, what you hear, you're going off people pointing to you and saying, okay, hey, you're live on the yeah. air now, you better start talking. You know, I, I, so I have no idea who I'm talking to or if you can hear me <laughs> or what's going on at the moment, you're kind of just going off it there. But then, yeah, you're, you're kind of, I, I remember I interviewed Rocky at one point, um, yeah. which our, our mascot doesn't talk. So that's, <laughs> <laughs> That was that was going back into the locker room beforehand and going over with uh, with Rocky. Hey, here's here are the things I'm going to say to you. Here's how I need you to react to it in the moment and kind of choreographing our entire interview. (laughs) Classic TV. (laughs) And I think one time I just saw it was sorority night. So I I saw that as an opportunity to going into the crowd and and interviewing sorority girls. So, I you know, I, I took advantage of some of those things. Well, uh, and not only that, one of the things when, I, as we've talked about before, and I've told students over the years, I said, uh, you know, you were one of the announcers for WIU baseball. I think it was your senior year. And you decided to, not, you know, again, expand and improve what we were doing. And so you made these how-to videos um, that we could air during our, our broadcast that you know, broke up the, you know, the, the commercial breaks, the, the promos, PSAs or whatever we were showing. And, and it was really, you know, well done. And, uh, and, and as you said, it was informative. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's one of those cases where you watch a broadcast or you're looking at what we were doing and it was, you know, it was the same few PSAs over and over again, or you, we, you had to stick with the broadcast team during a commercial break and, you know, we're sitting there and it was me and it was Kyle and it was Brock that were doing the games and it's okay. You know, instead of just talking through these two, three minutes, like what else could we do? And it's, Oh, why don't, you know, what if I went out ahead of time and did this and, you know, back to playing baseball freshman year and not leaving on any kind of bad note or anything like that. I still had a really good relationship with, uh, with, with coach Hyman that I was able to go to him and say, Hey, can I come to your practice for about 20 minutes and take over and film stuff and, you know, completely interrupt everything that you're trying to do with this team to film something <laughs> really dumb. <laughs> and he let me, he let, he let me do this. And it was so much, I mean, I, it, it wasn't just me going out there and doing that. I needed to have good film, uh, good camera guys that came out there and were willing to do something in the middle of their afternoon that, that we're willing to do that and then go sit in, a, in an editing bay and do all that as well. So for all the ideas and stuff that we came up with, I needed to have a crew of people that, that were willing to step in and, and help me make all this happen. And, and then to come up with the ideas and put forth everything and then make it work on, uh, on the TV too was, it was, it was so much fun to just come up with these ideas and, and put forth this stuff. So we've kind of detailed some of your accomplishments, but um, as you said, there's there's some other students that you were working with. Kind of, what kind of memories do you have of other students or faculty, Joe? I so, I mean, I've I've said this. I think every time I've come back, if we're talking, we're going to start with faculty. Uh, Mike Murray is is a guy that I remember from the first day that I came to campus. Yeah. And I, I'm pretty sure I saw him every single day. I was a student at Western and I've gotten a chance to see him every time I've gone back. And he's, I mean, anybody that's watching this that has ever set foot in the broadcasting department, I feel like they know Mike Murray and they know exactly who he is. And that's not a, uh, that's just not somebody you ever forget. Uh, just the impact 
and I, I had him as my advisor when I first started. So, and then when he moved away from that and, and, you know, then having Pat Stout there, but it was always nice to see Mike whenever I, I had a chance to. And another one too, that was always, uh, and I don't think newer students won't remember this name or won't know this name, but Don Norton was a, a guy who, and he was so well-traveled by the time that he came to Western. And I think Western was so lucky to have him there teaching students um, so much throughout the years that being able to reach out to him when I first started uh, doing radio, knowing his history behind radio was so helpful with, uh, with that. So that was, I mean, that was always really, uh, that, that was a nice asset to have there on campus. But as far as the students go, uh, Jeremy Hernandez, who, when he was, when he was there was, I, I don't think I would have graduated my senior year and put together the package that we had to put together at graduation, if it wasn't for him being able to help me <laughs> with you, every with, with <laughs> everything, so and I know that I am not the only student that, uh, that that thinks that same way about him, too. So that was that that was very helpful. But there were uh, there were so many that that were just there throughout. And I mean, you know, I mentioned Brock Brock Wismiller, who's yeah. now at Upper Iowa. And just how talented he was broadcasting and then stuck around and did so much for Western after that and is still doing uh, so much today with, with that. And I, I you know, I, I think it was, I want to say it was Chris Morris, I think was yeah. uh, the ca my cameraman for some of those, uh, for some of those bits too, just being able to, uh, to talk, you know, somebody into coming out and helping with <laughs> on a, you know, on three o'clock on a Wednesday and come out and do that is just, it, it was really nice. So when you leave WIU, and you venture out into the world, you have a little bit of time away, but then you end up coming back to Macomb of all places. Talk about your professional journey. So, I mean, I would have graduated, I guess it would have been in May of 2007. And I, you, I mean, when you first graduate, like I, I've always told your students, like you could either go get an internship, an unpaid internship, or you could find somewhere to work and get paid. And not much, but get paid. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to find a job anywhere and try to figure out what direction I would take from there. So my first actual job out of Western was at a station in Springfield, Illinois. Oh, and I don't remember the name of the station. I know it was a cluster of radio stations in one building. I know if you're around exit 100 on 55, you could see it from the highway. It's across the street from a Flying J, the Flying J subway for people that know that route on 55. And all I was doing was the board op for Cardinal games. I was doing that. And then they were training me to do on air stuff. They were training me. They were having me just record fake weather updates when I was there running the board for Cardinal games. And they were going to work with me on my delivery for that. So that year, the Cardinals didn't go, but I don't think they, no, that would have been 2007. They didn't make the playoffs that year. Their season ended um, first week of October, last week of September, whenever. And I stopped getting hours. I stopped getting stuff. So I started applying for other jobs and I applied for a job with Prairie Radio Communications. And my interview was in Galesburg, but I ended up getting hired at the station in Macomb. And it was just a sales job where they told me I would also be doing play-by-play um, -play for high school stuff. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, whatever. Like, if you're going to put me on the air, I'll take it. I want to do on-air stuff. So I started doing that. And about two weeks into that job, the morning host on K100 got fired. And it wasn't, it, it wasn't a planned, it wasn't planned for him to leave. He got let go and they needed somebody to fill in. So it was, hey, Joe, you said you wanted to be on the air. Let's let's go on the air. Let's let's give it a try. So, within the first month there at K100, I was doing the morning show for for the station for Macomb, one of Macomb's biggest stations. I also want to point out too that this is around November or so, and the station in Springfield called me to let me know that I had hours on my uh, that I was scheduled to work that weekend. <laughs> And I had to let them know that you guys hadn't scheduled me to be on the on there in two months. I went and found a new job. 
So oh. I don't think I was ever, I don't think I ever left. And I don't think I was ever fired from my first ever radio job. They, I don't, could be, they could still be scheduling you. I don't know what my employment <laughs> status is there, there at that school. So, <laughs> so I was still doing, and the thing is, I was still doing sales along with being on the air. So, I mean, I was doing, I got thrown into everything. And then you're talking multiple nights a week that I'm doing high school football, high school basketball. I mean, I'm, I'm doing a lot of stuff there in, in my first job and driving in communities and towns that I've never heard of before and having to go and, you know, do in, in a lot of these small towns too, especially back then, like they relied on listening to these games, whether it was their kids, their grandkids, their, you know, nieces, nephews, they wanted to hear the broadcast for that. So I, you, know, you felt, you felt a great deal of importance early yeah. in those jobs. So I, I did that for a while and then the station was sold and they moved us all up to Galesburg where I went from doing morning top 40 hits to doing news talk sports on an AM station. And it completely shifted. And all this time too, I mean, I'm 23 years old having to, uh, to make all these drastic changes to how I'm delivering myself every morning. Well, I think that, you know, what I see reflected is somebody that, that is very courageous and, and not afraid of challenges. You know, you always were so adaptable at, at everything you did because when the opportunity came to go to St. Louis, a lot of people would have blinked at that. And, and when you got into that market, Joe, you've always been one of the individuals that had no, uh, no fear, I always felt. It's, it's, be, I mean, it, not only that, but if, if, if you're going to be going to work down and I mean, St. Louis top 25 market, you got to make a splash and you have to stick around. And I mean, 12 years now here in St. Louis, and it, it seems like just yesterday I was, you know, this young, stupid kid that was in there, you know, not, didn't know anybody, didn't know what the hell I was doing. And I, I still feel that way at times now, <laughs> 12 years later, but to always, and one of the things I, I've talked about this with your students is I, I feel like I've gotten lucky so many times with how things have just played out and how things have worked their way out. But you also have to be confident that they're going to play out. You, you have to know. And I, there are so many people I feel in this last year of all walks of life that have had their worlds just flipped upside down that you, you just have to, you have to know that at some point things are going to get better. And if you keep, if you don't give up completely, things are going to end up getting better. And it, so it was a year ago. So we're, you know, it's, it's April 8th right now when we're doing this, it was April 7th last year when I got an email from the radio station, say an email from them saying, Hey, we're, we're letting you go because of all of the, you know, because of COVID we're letting you go. We'll, we'll give you a call in six weeks. I, I still haven't gotten that call, Buzz. <laughs> Maybe they're scheduling you too. <laughs> I, I, still, I still haven't gotten that call. Oh, really? But I mean, you're, I mean, I'm talking within an hour of that happening. I'm having to figure out, okay, like I have sponsors that are paying for me to be on the air. I just started with this new website. How do I make this all work? How do I keep delivering them what they're paying me? to, to deliver them. And I mean, I'm, you know, I, I, I'm not going to sit down and feel sorry for myself for a week because I, I have to deliver on this. So it's immediately, okay, what, okay, that sucks. What, what can I do now? Where, how can I change this into a positive? How can I make this benefit me? And I mean, here I'm sitting a year later and all the sponsors are still still there. All of them are still with us. I have this backdrop now. I mean, that's, you know, we're, we're doing great things. I mean, we, we can afford a backdrop with the, uh, with the website now. So <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, everything is, everything is worked out and it's, I mean, it had, it's taken luck and it's taken hard work to, to not give up too. Well, as I've told the students many times over the years, I said, you know, Part of why I'm I'm so proud of you, and I I you know I'm proud because of your success. But I had I feel like you know you really should be your mom and dad, or you know all the other people that should be proud of you um, as well. 
you know, because part of the, you know, what you've done over the, your career is you are not afraid to take chances and to go to do things like, for instance, you've covered Super Bowl week. You had a spot on Radio Row. You've been to some of the biggest sporting events around. You've been involved with, you know, the wrestling. I mean, there's so many things, Joe, that you just, you said, I'm going to go do it. And, and you did it. That's exactly how the first Super Bowl happened too. So this this year, this past year's Super Bowl is the first one I hadn't been. I had been to nine in a row before this past year. So that this this knocked out a streak of of nine in a row that I had. But the first one, and it really happened. So it start. I'm a huge fan of Dan Patrick's. Uh, that Dan Patrick is one of the guys that I, I I used to watch his show when I could all the time when it was on TV every day, and. There's so much I I want to take from what he does with his show that I think he does just so well that I want to take and utilize into how I am on the radio and and broadcasting. And I I saw, I think it was Miami one year and then the next year was in Dallas. And I see these huge setups that they have uh, when they're there. And of course, I mean, it's Dan Patrick. He's nationally syndicated, was on TV. They can afford all that stuff. Well, I see that the Super Bowl... 10 years ago was in Indianapolis. It's a four hour drive from St. Louis. I figure how, you know, why don't I go there? I I should go there. You know, that's how, how difficult would that be to pull off? So I get the station to credential me. I get another guy to come there to help set up everything. And we go, we, we go drive to Indianapolis. We go drive four hours. We get a really, really cheap hotel room on a bad part of town. And we decide, okay, we're going to set this up. Little did I know that most of the people there have interviews that they had set up weeks ago, that they know people there, and they have all of these things already prearranged. I knew none of that. I kind of showed up and was like, huh, okay, like, let's let's see what we can make happen here. So you're kind of going around, you're asking people to come on with you, you have no idea what's going on. And that first night, we get lucky to where Eddie George is walking around. Jeff Fisher was just, I don't know if he was just announced as the uh, Rams head coach. I can't remember exactly how it worked out, but I remember we had Eddie George sit down on our show talking about Jeff Fisher and it could not have worked out any better for (laughs) in, in that time for the way that it all, you know, that it happened. And then you're kind of grabbing other people to come and sit down with you. And as you're going around, you're learning, you're like, Oh, okay. So if we do this again next year, we have to do all of these things and make all of these things better and improve on it to where I went there with zero guests booked the first year, the last year I went there. I mean, I have well over 50 booked for the, for the week. And that's most of them. I mean, I don't know, around 30 or 40 of them or before I even set foot on the plane to fly down there. So, so now we have um, young people come to our program, Joe, that are, definitely interested in doing what you have been doing over your career. And, um, you know, they, but I don't think sometimes they realize the work that goes on behind the scenes to be prepared to do an interview, you know, and, and that's the joy of having you come talk to our young people is you give them an indication of what is, what the commitment will be like. Um, podcasting, is probably going to be around for a while. And, and not that it's going to completely supplement what has gone on in radio. It's definitely a new communication mode, don't you think? Oh, yeah. It's just the fact that it's right there at your fingertips. I, so seconds before you and I started doing this today, I just wrapped up doing a, uh, a WrestleMania podcast with another broadcaster here in St. Louis. And we did about an hour and a half just on WrestleMania this weekend. That's going to go up later on this afternoon because they're going to have all Thursday, all Friday, all Saturday to listen to it now where it's going to be relevant. Not so much, you know, as opposed to just radio where yes. And every, every radio show, every good radio show out there should be podcasting their shows or at least putting up their shows once they're, you know, once they head to a commercial break, but Right now, that per you know, if somebody is a wrestling fan out there wants to hear what we had to say about it, they'll be able just to go to their phone, go to whatever app they use, and and hit play on it. And 
that is, I mean, that is so important now. If you miss something, you can go back and listen to it immediately. It's not, oh, did you hear what happened? Nope. Okay, you missed it. And that's the same for even radio now too. And I think there's so many radio stations or I, I maybe even radio talent that's realizing that, that yes, it's important to have drive time radio, AM, PM. It's important to have that. It's important to have live radio for people that are working at their office or working from home and they want to have the radio on and listen to something going on during the day. But you want to be able, you want to be accessible to people 24 seven. You, you just don't want to be accessible to that person who has a 30 minute commute and you're in the car with them from 7.30 to 8 a.m. every day. They want to be able, if, if they like you, they want to listen to the full two, three hours of it. And if they're able to just click something and listen to their phone later in the day, they can. And so what kind of advice would you have for our students today, Joe, that uh, obviously things have changed and you're not very sure exactly where the business is going, but what kind of um, ways can they be prepared for? I mean, just do as much now as you can to be prepared for whatever you're asked to do later. I, I, we talked about all the TV stuff that I did, all the, the, the sideline stuff. I wish that I, back then, I wish 12 years ago, I wish I took more of an a, a initiative to do more TV stuff back then. I wish I would have taken more of that route back then. And now, you know, you see the, the stuff that we're doing now, we're recording this. And over the past year, Zooms or the website we use is called StreamYard. We do so much live video for it now that it feels like I'm slowly starting to work my way back into the visual part of it. Yeah. But I wish I would have done so much more of that over the past 10 years. And it would have been just as easy. I mean, it, you know, 12 years ago, if I would have put forth the effort to do it, I probably could have I have much more of a career in, in TV than I don't have any now. It's all web-based stuff. But I mean, for so long, it was just purely radio that I, I feel like I missed out on something. And I feel like if I would have taken advantage of it back then, I, I, I would have been a lot, uh, I would have been better off. I would have been more set to do it today. So, but like I said, I mean, my first job was in sales. I took a sales job to hopefully get on the radio. I didn't know a thing about sales. I really didn't. <laughs> and it just so happens, what, 14 years later, I'm still doing sales today, that it was something I got thrown into and I had to be taught and that I thought, okay, surely, you know, I'll, uh, if, I, if I could just get past this and make, make it for myself in radio, I'll never have to sell again. No, you always have to be selling. You, you always have to be selling yourself. You can't rely on somebody else just to you know, go out there and sell it for you. You, you have to be out there in front of those people and you, you know, building those relationships with the clients is really, really important. I think I've told your students this too. If, if you have the option to take a marketing class, even if you're in broadcasting, you know, if you're just wanting to be behind the microphone and do that, take a marketing class, learn about the sales side of things. And one thing that I've learned over this past year is I need to be a lot better at like graphic design stuff and stuff like that. If you can do it yourself, if you can go and create your own logos or create something for a client that they can use, that's going to be beneficial to you as well. Learn how to do that. I've, I am so terrible at Photoshop, but I've been trying to learn for the past year how to use Photoshop. And it's always, you know, just don't think that you could sit behind a microphone and you can talk for a few hours learn what else you can do to improve on, on that one skill. Well, I don't think I, I know many people that have been more adaptable than Joe Roderick. And, uh, I, and I know we could just talk uh, on and on, Joe. I, I, one of the things I just want to mention, you know, I'm, I'm so happy to see uh, your family because I know you're a proud father. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's great to see uh, you happy and, and, and successful and, um, and, you know, uh, I will always, as long as I'm teaching here, I will ask you to come back because I think that's the kind of uh, gift that you have is you are able to communicate uh, and, and help kids understand, you know, that uh, you need to be flexible in this industry. I will always, uh, I will always come back and I, uh, I can tell you that uh, many of the things, uh, plaques, 
Western apparel, anything else is proudly still hanging in my house uh, <laughs> today. So I, uh, I will always be a Western Illinois leatherneck and I will always be proud to help out however you can. And I don't know if my son, uh, if the audio of him getting yogurt made this podcast or not, but uh, <laughs> I am doing this from my kitchen right now because I had to adapt to everything else going on in my house today. So I have, uh, I'm doing this from my kitchen and he, he was right over there during part of it, uh, trying to, trying to open up a yogurt cup. So I don't know if he made an appearance or not in this oh, podcast. You know, I think it would be a joy <laughs> to have him on. <laughs> Trust no. me. He, he very much loves any time that I let him talk on the microphone and as I, as, as important it is to me to have the sponsors and all of the stuff down, I think he has learned my live reads, a few of my live reads from the amount of times he's heard me say it <laughs> over the years. <laughs> well, it's great to, uh, th th thanks again for being on the podcast, Joe. I appreciate it so much. I, I appreciate you having me anytime. And thanks to our weekly viewers for tuning in to the podcast. Make sure to join me again next week for another talk with a WIU alumnus. Until then, stay safe, take care, and God bless.